Hi, and welcome to some really delicious uh, suggestions and recommendations from Heinen's to you and your significant other, special person in your life that are great selections and solutions to celebrate Valentine's Day. Um, you know, any wine, we believe, at least I believe, uh, could be made romantic uh, due to the circumstances, the person, the food, the setting. Uh, but something about Valentine's Day you know, certainly speaks to romance. And in looking at what wines uh, we would like to recommend for Valentine's Day, sparkling wines are always a great idea for any sort of celebration. And then certainly uh, for Valentine's Day, sparkling rosés just uh, made even more sense than um, any other wine that we could think of. Uh, there's never a bad time to drink bubbles and uh, sparkling rosés, but to celebrate uh, this, this loving day with some lovely wines, um, we are excited to share these with you. Um, we also wanted to make sure that the wines we have chose for this tasting represent what we think are really outstanding values. Um, and there's two reasons for that. One, because you're a customer who would like to give you the best deals possible and save you money. And secondly, you can buy these great bottles of bubbles and still have plenty of money left to splurge on uh, dinner, dessert, cheeses, uh, gifts, flowers, anything else you want to get to celebrate the special day. So. Um, the, each of these are similar, but just as different as they are similar. And we have chosen wines from three different countries, uh, made from different grapes. Even though they're all rosés, they are about as different from uh, each other as you would ever want to imagine. One thing before we start is that um, it's, it's, uh, I never assume that everyone knows what rosés really are. There's no such thing as a rosé grape. Um, usually rosés are made by blending either all red grapes, a combination of white and red grapes, but the key is that when you use or make rosés that you get the uh, very little skin contact of the red grapes, which is where all the pigmentation, all the color of the grape is at. So the less amount of time that these wines spend on the uh, grape skins, the less color they'll pick up and they'll get this little blush of color, as they're sometimes called, or uh, rosé color. And don't forget too, here's a bit of trivia for you, that the word rosé in French means roses, something like that. Anyhow, it sounds good and it's true. So let's try our first wine and I have some uh, some really fun cheeses that uh, we know will pair with this. And again, please do these wines with food. Uh, any wine tastes better with food. We always like to do our virtual tastings with just some cheese comparisons. So uh, you'll know just by tasting with something simple as cheese, something as delicious as cheese, what the food will do to the wine and what the wine does to the food and how they complement each other. Uh, this is something that uh, we at Heinen's are really excited about. Um, by a show of hands, well, all hands will be raised, I have a feeling, but um, by a show of hands, everyone has heard of Prosecco. Uh, and really, single-handedly, Prosecco, and Prosecco is made in Italy, uh, Verona, up in northern Italy. Um, Prosecco really single-handedly has um, regenerated the sparkling wine business, not just in Italy, but throughout the world. Um, there's a few reasons that, that all make sense. Um, chief among them are their amazing values, and they are easy to drink, fresh, fun, uncomplicated. Um, they really work well when you just want to open up a, a great or fun little bottle of wine uh, just because, and they work with everything. Um, and up until very recently, all Proseccos that we could get in and, and really produced for that matter were not rosé. They were just the made from white grapes, white wine uh, Proseccos. This made by uh, Gio is um, the first rosé Prosecco that we have uh, been able to get for our stores. And if you like Prosecco, you're going to love the rosés. Um, all of these, you can't really see the mum, but you'll notice the colors are beautiful, delicate colors. And what's neat about this one is that many Proseccos that are in the under $15 range are not vintage dated. This is 2019 vintage. And what that really means to you is that just that extra care and quality that goes into this wine, that it's made from grapes from one, uh, one particular harvest. It lets you know how uh, the wine is fresh. You always want to drink these kind of wines uh, in their youth. And they're just really, really, really going to get as popular as any sparkling rosé in the world, just like the, uh, the white Proseccos have. So when you, I'll stop talking so we can enjoy this now. Certainly when you uh, smell any wine, you want to really 
get a good smell going on. And you'll notice that I have a regular wine glass for these bubbles. I'm a bit of a geek, or quite a geek, I guess, when it comes to sparkling wines. Um, I like to use mostly the a little bit wider um, rim glasses because it really, when the, the glass is wider like this, it allows more of the aromatics of the wine to come out. When you get the tiny little flutes, conversely, that kind of closes the, uh, the opening of the glass up so you get less aromatics, which I believe. But again, me just being geeky, use whatever glass you're comfortable with. But um, I love the aromatics of wine, and, and I would challenge anyone that when you open a bottle of wine, please pay particular attention to the aromatics because there's a lot of care and effort that goes into a wine, not just as it tastes, but as um, the winemaker's developing these wonderful aromas. When we smell this, it smells fresh, like I said earlier. It smells like you want to have a sip, which we'll do in a second. And it almost has a, a perfuminess to it. Certainly um, more complex than a lot of just white Proseccos in this price range. Um, there's a lot of things going on there, but it just it speaks to freshness. So let's give this a try. Mm -hmm. um, fresh, easy to drink. Not too dry or um, uh, tart. Has a great mid, uh, mid palate. It's a very versatile wine. And versatile in terms of not just the food it works with, but versatile in terms of the audience. Um, a, a true bubble head that drinks nothing but higher end bubbles will drink Prosecco and appreciate it. If you're just getting into sparkling wines or sparkling roses, Prosecco is generous enough to understand that it's not intimidating, it's just fun to drink. So it really kind of works on both ends of, uh, of the wine world. Um, it's made from the, the traditional white grape of Veneto, up where Prosecco is made, uh, called Glera. And they also then, to get the right color in here, pink color in here, use a grape they call Pinot Nero, and the rest of the world calls Pinot Noir. So it's a classic. Uh, we'll talk about Pinot Noir next, and, and again after that. But um, Pinot Noir is one of the classic sparkling grape, uh, wine grapes used uh, in production of sparkling wine all over the world. Of course, now we have to have uh, a cheese pairing, and I just wanted to keep the, uh, hopefully you can see this, it is a cheese called Latour, um, yeah, L-A spa uh, space T-U-R. It sounds French, and if you think it's French, as, as I would have, uh, you'd be wrong. It's actually Italian. Shockingly enough, Italian wine, Italian cheeses. What's really fun about this cheese, uh, the Italians have a term that they use uh, for a cheese like this called uh, tre latte or three milk. And this one, you can tell if cheese is goo when it just goos up the entire knife. Um, this one is made from three different kinds of milks, cow, sheep, and goat. Not many cheeses that we have in our stores have those three um, milks in the, in, the, um, in the making of the cheese. But um, this soft ripened cheese, meaning um, soft ripened and aged, so it's kind of got a, a bit of funkiness to it, but certainly not over the top. Um, you can you can hopefully see how creamy it is um, as a, a bit of a cheese geek as well. Always for cheeses that are really special and, and good cheeses, take them out of the fridge for about half an hour before you serve them because that way they'll they'll soften up a bit. Um, just like a wine, if a wine is too cold, the flavors will be muted. If a cheese is too cold, the same thing. You won't get all that the uh, the cheese is trying to tell you. So let's give this a taste. Uh, really, really creamy cheese. And the reason that we chose these kind of cheeses uh, is you'll you'll see that it's a texture thing. Creamy cheeses, uh, sparklers that have that effervescence, it creates a nice um, uh, contrast of textures in your mouth. So let's try it. Mm. Well, it really tastes like unlike any cheese you may have ever had. Um, and don't let the, um, if you've never had a sheep's milk cheese scare you, or goat milk cheese, or the fact they blend it scare you, all those three milks come together to form one delicious um, cheese experience. A little bit salty, certainly very rich, very creamy. Now, I've said, and I always will say, um, the best friends of bubbles are salt and fat. Really two of the key ingredients in any cheese. The saltiness will bring out the fruit flavor of the wine. The fat, again, texture-wise, will be a great counterpart to the bubbles and the, the scrubbing bubble character of sparkling wines. Let's go to taste. Mm. Well, um, a great pairing or a pairing that really works is really defined by um, being able to taste 
the two ingredients that you put together. Still being able to taste the integrity of the wine, still being able to taste the integrity of the cheese, but there's a third flavor that is created with a great pairing that highlights both the characters of the wine and cheese, but also emphasizes, in this case, a beautiful, um, like, a, like a white peach, um, nectarine kind of flavor. Um, it, it basically brings out more flavor of the wine than it does by itself. Um, and again, the texture thing really works, and that's really, really fun. So um, if you have never tried a, a, a extra-aged soft ripened cheese made with three different uh, milks, uh, we hope you enjoy that one as uh, a fun experience. Uh, Italy and Italy and all delicious. Our next wine, um, certainly Champagne is the, uh, the number one most known sparkling wine in the world. Uh, remember that Champagne, anything labeled Champagne, is actually made in the Champagne region of France. And uh, that is where the sparkling wine, really the modern day sparkling wine um, movement has, has taken place for, for um, centuries now. But Champagne is not the only place in France that makes quality, delicious sparkling wine. Really, sparkling wine is made all throughout uh, France. And through those different regions, uh, the sparkling wines, they use the, the grapes of the region or the indigenous grapes of the region. So for example, in Champagne, the classic grapes they use, and really around the world, are Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Um, this one from Greiton and Meyer is made, from, or is made in the Loire Valley. And the Loire Valley is south, um, south of the Champagne region. Um, and it's, it's a little bit warmer there, so Chardonnay and Pinot Noir uh, don't do as well. The Chardonnay and Pinot Noir really um, appreciate and kind of require um, cooler climates. So the indigenous grapes of uh, the Loire Valley, on the red side, it's Cabernet Franc primarily, uh, maybe a little bit of Cabernet Sauvignon, which is not much, but um, a tiny bit of Cabernet Sauvignon, but usually Cabernet Franc and Pinot Noir is making some inroads. Uh, even though it's a little bit warmer, warmer down there, but Cabernet Franc is the workhorse. And on the white side, there's a tiny bit of Chardonnay, and I can emphasize tiny, but the main uh, white varietal in the Loire Valley is Chenin Blanc. And certainly uh, in, in, uh, in Loire Valley, Chenin Blanc is a noble and great grape, and um, not many other places in the world does Chenin Blanc take on a, a, a role of nobility as it does in the Loire Valley. So this one is made with all of those four grapes we talked about, Pinot Noir and Cabernet Franc on the red side, a little bit of Chardonnay and more Chenin Blanc on the white side. What's important to know that a sparkling wine um, in France that is really not made in Champagne, they'll call Cremant. And the key with Cremant, most of these uh, Cremants from either the Loire, um, shoot other places in Burgundy, Bordeaux, um, up in Alsace, the, the, the key to know is that the, uh, these wines are made in the traditional method Champenois, which is a fancy way to say that the wines are fermented in the bottle, uh, as are uh, the, this guy and the uh, California mom. Prosecco, they um, get the bubbles are created in a, a, uh, a bulk tank, and the, the wine is already sparkling when they, uh, when they bottle it. Uh, these two wines, and anything in the traditional method, um, the bubbles are created through carbon dioxide that is um, achieved in the bottle. And that's a long, long, long story for another time. We have more time to talk about uh, how uh, sparkling wines are made. So again, Chardonnay, Chenin Blanc, and Cabernet Franc, and Pinot Noir. Yeah, um, really, one of the, um, sadly, we're not in the time of the year to do this, uh, to run right outside and do it, but one of the great smells of springtime is lilac. And that was the first, and always trust your first taste and always trust your first smell. What you smell at first and you taste at first, that's what the wine tastes like. Don't let anybody else talk you out of it or um, uh, think you're tasting something different. Always trust your first inclination. So lilacs just jumped out of the glass at me. And now I'm getting maybe kind of red delicious apple notes. Um, not really as many as berry notes. And I could probably tell you that's because Cabernet Franc is a very... It made into a red wine um, in Loire. Um, it's a blending grape in Bordeaux. There's a certain herbaceousness to Cabernet Franc. So that's kind of carrying through, believe it or not, on the sparkler, where it, it's, it smells less red berries than it does earthy and floral. Let's give it a taste. Mm -hmm. Great, generous mouthfeel. 
really um, raise the acidity. Um, and I, maybe some of you thought uh, to yourself when I mentioned Chenin Blanc that somehow this wine would be sweet. Uh, a, a lot of the Chenin Blancs made in the Loire Valley. They can be sweet, but they're also, they can be bone dry. This one's all about um, juicy acidity, um, complex flavors that are really that really evolve in the glass and on your palate. Just a fun little sparkler. Um, honestly, this is my favorite every day. Um, if I were lucky to uh, enough to drink bubbles every day, um, but for just an everyday rosé bubbles from France, um, in, in under twenty dollars, uh, Grattan Meyer is really really fantastic. So in keeping with our uh, theme of where the cheeses come from, if we had Italian wine and Italian cheese, we have a French wine. You might be able to guess that the cheese is in fact from France, and if you guess that, you'll be right. And this is one of our um, favorite triple cream cheeses um, called Daffinois. And uh, Daffinois, if it looks like brie, it is. And brie is a soft ripened cheese, as is Daffinois. Um, but brie, uh, the, the, the way they produce them and make them are similar. It's how they're aged, how they're made. The, the butter fat content of the cheese that differentiates the different styles of soft ripened cheese. So triple cream means that this cheese has, um, by law, at least 70% butter fat content in it. Cardiologist special, of course, but what it really means to you is that it's really, will be really luxurious, really full flavored, full fat, um, will create a really big um, richness in your mouth. And then the bubbles, um, again, with those uh, contrasts of creaminess and crispness, it'll create a great pairing. So let's try it. It's really so good. If you if you like brie, it tastes like brie on steroids. I kid you not. Mm. Really, um, and whereas the Latour, or excuse me, Latour, it was kind of gamey and it had a bit of funkiness to it, this is all just about indulgence and rich and buttery and creamy absolutely delicious and I can tell you this is going to be a pretty tasty pairing mm -hmm. and amazingly that less fruit flavors again not as many cherries berries apples uh, stone fruits uh, there it's still not one of those wines it still has that earthiness um, but it's ripe earthiness and what it does, the, the, uh, the creaminess of the cheese, as, as predicted and as, as expected, um, the balance between the richness and the, cream, the uh, crispness of the wine, and that salty, um, nice, nice rich flavor of the cheese uh, just highlights everything that's already going on in that wine on, on the flavor profile. Um, really, really fun. Um, if I get, well, I would move back. If you're doing any sort of uh, entertaining or meals, with these wines uh, and not just cheeses. I would do the uh, Prosecco Rosé with a, uh, and again, you don't need to do, uh, keep the, the theme indigenous to where they're from, but it's a fun thing to do. Um, I would do like a risotto with uh, either some um, pancetta or some prosciutto in there, either crisped up or on the ribbons. Um, salty ham, again, salt and fat. That little saltiness from the prosciutto or the pancetta with the creamy risotto will be fantastic. With the uh, the cremant de Loire, um, that you know, gosh, if you want to do something special that ordinarily wouldn't do, like game birds, like duck or pheasant, would be fantastic. Um, I, I just think really a, a poultry, a roast poultry, um, really comforty style um, would be a beautiful, beautiful uh, pairing with that at the table. Now we have our final wine of our tasting, and coming from the great state of California, this is the um, Mum Napa Brut Rosé. Um, Mum is one of the early champagne houses that invested in the, uh, not just California, but in the Napa Valley to produce uh, sparkling wines with a, a, a nod to the um, terroir, the, the environment, the grape growing regions of California but with a bit of the, the French parentage and the French heritage. And they are really one of the pioneers uh, going back over, geez, 50 years probably by now. Shandon is another one that has uh, uh, property um, in Napa and throughout California. There's a lot of the uh, French houses that have set up shop a long time ago that are making 
I think, incredible value sparkling wines. Um, and this is certainly one of our favorite uh, rosés from California. Um, so, totally different aromatically. Each wine, this is why we're doing three wines. They should all be different. We should have an apple, an orange, and a pear. And the apple, orange, and pear should taste like an apple, orange, and pear. Um, I hope that made sense. It, it did when I thought of it. But basically, each wine is, is very different. But they share the color, the, the, uh, the rosé color and the sparkliness. But they're all very, very different uh, as you could be. But they're all delicious. This one, the most, ama or most uh, immediate characteristic I get on this is that you really... Are able to smell the toastiness or the yeastiness um, in this wine. Um, this one has a little bit more bottle aging than the the, uh, the Cremant would, and um, when you get extended bottle aging, um, when the grapes or when the the, uh, the wine ferments in the bottle, the yeast will die off and create that toasty flavor, um, and it really should smell almost. Uh, these, these good yeasty French champagnes always have that. A lot of the French styles do that. It has a yeastiness like fresh baked bread, and that's really the first note you'll get, you'll get out of this. There's also just really um, here's where the berries are, are going to come uh, come through: strawberries, maybe some raspberries. It really, really smells wonderful. And um, this is, and we go in order a lot of times to make sense because in this case. We went from the the uh, lightest body, if you can call it that way, to the the, the, the larger, the bigger body, um, by fractions of an inch, perhaps. But um, it's just a great way to, if you're going to taste in order, to set your palate up for the, the biggest wine at the finish. So let's give this a, a good taste as well. A lot more flavor, a lot of richness. Um, there's some nice grip on the palate, almost chewiness. Um, beautiful wine made primarily from Pinot Noir um, with a, a few splashes of Chardonnay. So it's again, as it would make in Champagne, um, the two major grapes of Champagne, uh, Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, have found their home uh, in, in Napa with the Mum Rosé. Really intense, full flavored. This is a wine that will stand up to a lot of um, fun things at the table, uh, big flavored things at the table either on a spicy note, uh, there's enough fruit there to put out a moderately spiced, um, something like a curry or a you know, Mexican influenced, uh, not over the top heat, but heat will even bring out some great fruit flavors. Um, I think this would be great with, uh, with grilled or uh, pan seared salmon, uh, primarily with that because salmon of course is a very fatty fish and um, that would really, really play well with the crispness, or the, the nice acid of the wine. Um, but for our sake of argument today, we have another cheese. And uh, this is the Heinen's uh, Goat Cheese Medallion, and it's topped with a fig jam. And we chose this um, because we like it, and because figs are uh, something that you see all over the place in California, um, as, as many uh, crops are uh, in California or in, in the U.S. California is the leading fig producer in America. So we wanted to do that little nod of California produce and create a nice little kind of a fun pairing because goat cheese, if you've had it, is a uh, it, it's a tartar um, cheese and, and a little less fat content than cow's milk. So you're going to get some more acidity and a little bit more different mouthfeel. So that tartness will be a great counterbalance to that sweetness of the fig jam. You know, fig jam, as you can imagine, will have some sweetness to it. And together, um, and sometimes you'll see people who put honey on cheese. Um, it's that same thing, sweet and savory uh, coming together to make one flavor. So I guess we have kind of three things going on here, sweet, savory, and then the uh, wine pairing. So let's give that a shot. If you've never done um, sweet um, accoutrement or um, additions to cheese, and it's your first time, it will not be your last. You get it immediately. I would kind of say, it's the premise of um, why you put um, like strawberries on cheesecake. Now, cheesecake obviously has some sweetness to it, but it's it's almost like that where the, the figs become the topping of a, a drier cheesecake. Really, really fantastic. And well, it's not a good pairing unless it tastes good together. So let's make sure that's not the case. Mm -hmm. And you would think maybe that the 
the sweetness would dominate the flavors of the wine. And you have to be careful. Um, sweet will always win out over dryness. It just, it's just, it's more of an influence on your palate. So you never want to have something too sweet go with a, a, any kind of wine that is drier because what'll happen is um, when the sweetness does win out, it will make the, the wine taste bitter. In this case though, there's enough fruit um, in the, the Mum uh, Rosé to really create and highlight the, the ripeness of this wine, those berry flavors, and it's just just a fun, fun, fun pairing. So there we have it. Um, we certainly hope that you have a wonderful Valentine's Day and that these wines, um, if you've tried any or all this evening, that um, they become some of your go-to sparkling wines moving forward. Um, and maybe you can even try with some of these food pairings. And if you uh, come up with any different food pairings, please let us know and we can share those uh, on social media. And um, with any, really any sparkling wine, don't be afraid to use it at the table because it is wine and uh, the versatility of sparkling wine with food. Uh, hopefully you've seen today or will taste on your own. Sparkling wine is really, really versatile as well as it is delicious. I've really enjoyed uh, tasting some great sparklers with you this evening and tasting some great cheeses. And we look forward to seeing you on our next virtual tasting next month. Thanks for joining us and cheers.